Hello, this is Overlord Bo, back with another ship review video, and today we'll be looking up the upcoming Pan-Asian super ship, the Destroyer, the Coming. Now, the Coming together with the Joshua Humphreys will be available in the Lighthouse auction soon after this video goes live. Uh, it should be around this weekend, so right now it should be the 14th when this video is going out, or the 15th, so it should be the 14th, so it should be coming on this weekend, uh, which should be the 17th or 18th one of those days now just like the previous auctions players across the world can bid for a uh, limited a lot of ships if you bid more than the lowest winning amount then you're refunded the difference uh normally the bids are around 100 million to start with so and i think they like normally the bids for this region go about, about 200 million i believe so we'll have to see how it goes this time around as always uh, i don't recommend participating in the auction due to the inflated ship costs you're essentially paying about five times the cost of the ship just to play the ship three months earlier than everyone else unless you really want the ships now then i suggest waiting until the ship is fu is fully released now i'm going to be going over my recommended ship uh, command sorry the captain build and module setup and talk about the ship parameters then provide commentary about the replay now the captain build and upgrades will be shown on the top right now, this is the same build I'd recommend for the other Pan-Asian Destroyers. Uh, basically, a torpedo-focused build and they make enemy enemy cruisers and BBs life of living hell. Pretty risible. Now, the radio location is included as I found it useful for avoiding other DDs that are trying to hunt you. And also, if you're trying to hunt down submarines, it's also useful as well. Now, alternatively, there is also a radar build, which I'll put up as well. Um, you can also run a radar gunboat build to surprise other DDs. Now, your guns aren't as good, but you can still ambush DDs in smoke or radar for your allies. Now, either way, I'd recommend running the same build as you took on the Yu Yang. Uh, so, whichever one you prefer there. So, if you took a radar build, you can take a radar build. If you just did a torp build, you can do a torp build. Now, the coming can be described as a conceptual successor to the Somers, uh, essentially in a large variant with more torps and anti or per war gaming description. In the game, the coming fills the same role as a Yu Yang, but with 50% more torpedoes. It's basically a spam deep water torpedoes at big enemy ships and watch the damage roll in. Now, any push without a Hydra or a DD screen will instantly explode against your wall of 15 torpedoes. Now, 30 torpedoes when you use a torpedo reload booster, which is an insane amount of torpedoes. Now, other than the additional torpedo rack, the coming is mostly a side graded com compared to the Yu Yang. Her HP pool and guns are modest improvements, but not where she can fend off other DDs reliably. Not only will you struggle to hit DDs past six kilometers due to the US DD arcs, but you can't even outgun any DDs you do manage to hit. Now, the dispersion of the of the guns will be shown on the top right, so you guys can take a look at that for a little bit. Now, her concealment is also 6.3 kilometers, and it's also considered worse than Yu Yang's 5.8 kilometers, which is kind of a disappointment. Now, uh, I'm going to be showing the armor scheme as well, which will be shown on the top right, so you guys can take a look at that. Now, basically, the coming is struggles against all but the worst tier 9 DDs, uh, radar doesn't help much more than scaring the enemy DD away. It works against lesser skilled enemies, but once they see through your ruse, it's pretty much GG at that point. It's not a good thing as you'll die very quickly due to a lack of armor. Now, the coming's maneuverability does her no favors either. She is faster than the Y buy, but still slow when compared to other tier 10 and super ships. Combined with the large 700 meter turning radius, the coming is not a good at dodging enemy attacks. Instead, her, your Pan-Asian smoke will be your escape method, so don't be afraid to use it if you get into trouble. Now, the same thing applies to when you're dodging CV strikes. While the ship description says you have enhanced anti-air, the tier 10 CVs will ignore it uh, like almost every other DD. Her depth charges isn't much better. In fact, her anti sermon capabilities is somehow worse than her predecessors, which is really a disappointment. It's nothing like the Chong Mew or the Yu Yang that are good at killing subs anyway. So, I mean, I mean it's not like the Chong Mew or the Yu Yang were good at hunting and killing submarines anyway. Now, the coming plays more like a highly specialized version of the Yu Yang. She sacrifices nearly everything for that extra rack of torpedoes. It's great for oppressing large pushes, but awful if a DD decides to ruin your day. Kind of like a mini Janon, if you think about it. 
it does have great torpedo power but the dd ruin your gameplay if you instantly explode to enemy guns now the coming actually fares worse than the yy because of her also awful concealment if you don't run radar the other d's can keep you permanently spotted forever which is uh, definitely a no-go now if you do have radar then these same d's can still outgun you in a fight and it's really sad when a tier 9 dd like a fryzen or a grodigan can completely counter a super ship without issues now you can try the radar coming if you'd like but you're completely rely reliant on skill difference and allied support to win the dd fight instead it's usually better just to focus your efforts on the torpedoing bigger ships the Cummings' entire purpose is to counter large pushes with cruisers or battleships uh, once the enemy starts pushing the 30 torpedoes will send them running back to port and you can spot for your team or occasionally smoke up to finish off the low health ships now overall i think the coming is too specialized of a ship uh, she can smash huge blobs of cruisers and battleships but she doesn't do well outside of her niche and even when torpedoing other ships the yu yang engine and on can do the same job reasonably well without spending 45 million on a super ship at least she's still relatively easy to play but once you learn her playstyle, there isn't much where you can get out of her, simply because she can't do it effectively in the first place. Now, if you do like the Yu Yang, then the, the coming is more of the same thing. Uh, other players may buy her for her unique name, since coming. It's pretty funny, pretty funny. But otherwise, I don't, I don't highly recommend spending 45 or 250 million credits on a ship when there's better super ships exist. Now, because of her limited niche, I don't see her being a big, a good pick for ranked or clan batters, clan battles. Uh, the Yang already does the same thing and doesn't come with the same drawbacks of using super ship in these formats. The YY also doesn't get outspotted by other DDs, a critical advantage in DD setups. Now, again, you are able to bid on the uh, coming and the Humphreys and the upcoming auction which will be around this Friday, so around the 17th or 18th, so you guys are aware. Uh, so this will be going on the 14th. Uh, so if you guys are interested, the starting bill will be around, it's uh, from all the other auctions, it's around like 100 million, so I'm just estimating that's what it's gonna be, so you guys can let me know if it is, but as far as I'm aware, it's just gonna be 100 million to be done bid. And usually the winning bid for these ships are around 200 million. Uh, but I find it's going to be way lower since there's a lot more super ships around. So maybe around 150 million, maybe the hundred, the winning bid around uh, for these super ships uh, from for these. So if you guys want to spend 150 million credits on a ship, uh, you guys can do that if you like. But for me, I will definitely not be doing that. I don't really see it worth uh, for this ship and for the Humphreys. I'd rather just wait. I'd honestly just I'd rather just wait until it actually uh, comes out. So you guys can do that for sure. But um, but yeah, um, I th that's pretty much it for the review. So I'll just talk about the real plays at this point. So whenever I was playing this ship, um, like I was saying earlier, it does feel like that you need to pretty much just focus on the torpedoes. I don't think that this ship is worth building into the guns at all or using radar at all i think you just need to utilize it having the 15 torpedoes and build into that distinctly now if you don't want to that's perfectly up to you you can choose if you want to or not totally your choice of course so if you want to do it you can if not you know it's a, it's a total like up to you of course so you really don't have to so it kind of just depends on you and if you're interested in wanting to spend that much but again, I, I personally would not want to spend that much. It's definitely like a big waste of time if you do that. So I would highly like not do that. But again, if you want to do it, you're more than welcome to. If not, if not. So totally up to you in the end. So there is that. But um, but yeah, it's pretty much going to be it for this particular replay. So if you guys are interested, so... That's gonna be it for this particular replay. So, uh, moving on to the next replay. So we'll see how this one goes. As I, I actually don't remember how this one goes, so we'll see. I kind of had like an error with my replay, so if my audio doesn't perfectly match up. That's pretty much why. So, yeah, that's a uh, 
that's fun fun for sure i hate when uh i do that it's not the uh the funnest time ever no no it is not definitely not the funnest of times is when you're trying to sync things and it's like oh yeah it's like no it's like Pfft. it's the biggest disaster ever man biggest disaster of all time but anyway uh moving on from that uh because i have it good now anyway so anyway off to the uh next replay at this point so but yeah i'm just trying to think about this particular ship it's like if you guys enjoy like a dd that like a pretty much like a pure torp dd then i would say that definitely like this ship would be a good fit for you if you like enjoy that kind of gameplay but uh, i'm not like a hundred percent on that like it's it's good it's a good torp dd right it's it's a good torp dd i enjoy playing as a torp dd that's a good thing but playing it as like a gunboat anyway i just cannot see it at all i just can't see it trying to like trying to use the guns too much on this thing you're definitely gonna get it walled by the other dd so you definitely have to be careful in that regard you also don't have a funny button as well which is also a humongous detriment like oh man that is just ugh. it's like like for me i definitely think that the humphrey is a lot better of an option compared to the the coming I think the one of like the main things that makes the coming good is its name. It's just it's just a hilarious name for a ship. Like I think it's like coming is just a meme. I know that it's like for the name itself. It's just it's just gonna be a funny meme at this point. But yeah, tomorrow I should have the Humphreys video out tomorrow. So if you guys are interested in seeing the Humphrey, it should be out tomorrow. So you guys are more interested in the Humphrey, you'll see that video going out tomorrow. I do apologize I didn't get out today. I kind of, I kind of messed up on that. So I apologize uh, in that regard. So I do apologize. So hopefully you guys are having yourself a good time during the holiday, not the holiday, during like everything that's going on. So hopefully you guys are anyway. Kind of a rough, rough couple of uh, months so far this year. So fun, fun, fun. But yeah, again, the ship does have an amazing amount of torpedoes. And if you do a good job, you can just absolutely just hammer down enemies. So for instance, like this poor boss, that's just going to be sitting bow in. Oh no, this poor fella. He's just going to eat so many torps. Oh boy, that man, that man is going to be suffering so much in this match and i feel so bad for him but yeah it's definitely stinky and also as you can see here the problem with having such a large concealment as well uh a lot of the other dds at the tier are able to outspot you and since you're not really a gumbo it's definitely suffering in that regard i am curious if i kill him or not i don't remember i just know that i was torping him here Oh, yeah, that's three torps. Youch. Now there's... Now I think I'm going to hit him two more times. Uh, or it's one. And I think it's a perma. Oh, wait, is it one or two? Uh, oh, it's one. Okay, and it's a perma flood. Oh, okay. Well, if he has Kinesinov, then he should be fine then. But if he doesn't have Kinesinov, then he, he's going to be dying then at that point. What is... Uh-oh. Oh, God. Oh, God. Now, if I, uh, yeah, that was a major mistake. If I did not, if I, if, if they had range of those torps, I would have been dead 100% there. That was just me being stupid. But I pretty much at this point, I am the one that's perma spotting this Mosfa. So he's kind of just, I feel so bad for the guy because he tried to just play a bow win, which is one of the strengths of the boss. But at the same time, you can also play in a kiting position. You turn out early enough, but since the concealment of a boss is so large, it's really difficult to sometimes get that turn so that you're able to do that. So that is a rips for sure. Yeah, but again, I'm up at like 6 a.m. recording this video. Uh, I am doing my absolute best to not yawn. So doing my best. A few people, because yeah, I, I don't like to yawn during my up but sometimes a yawn will escape 
while I'm recording, so I do apologize. Hmm. Man, even saying the word just makes you want to know. It's horrible. But as you can see, during like a lot of this conceal, like a lot of these engagements, you're just being suffered by like whenever you're trying to use the guns. Like, or like whenever, like you're being bullied by like the concealment, like for a lot of the time for this ship. Oh Lord, look at all them torpedoes. Oh no. There's a lot of dildos. There's a lot of them. Good Lord. What a disaster. Biggest disaster of all time. Hmm. I also need to stream today too. Today's uh, Tuesday. <sighs> I'm not sure if I'm streaming Wednesday, but I'll definitely be showcasing uh, both the Humphreys and the coming today whenever I stream. So you guys can definitely take a look at that whenever I'm uh, streaming it, of course. So you guys can definitely take a look if you're interested in watching it on my Twitch. You guys, most of you guys know my Twitch. So. So yeah, if you guys enjoy my Twitch, then you guys will definitely uh see it there. Hmm, I'm just trying to think. Cause yeah, I did want to get my Humphreys video out first, but in the end, I kind of decided to do the coming first, and the Humphreys will be out tomorrow. Cause I felt like a lot of people were gonna be covering uh the Humphreys first and not the coming, so I just kind of wanted to get the coming out since I knew I didn't think a lot of people would cover it first, but. We'll see. And I do apologize for butchering the name, but I, I kind of like memeing the name. Because just, just look at all, how many torps this thing just sends out. Just good lord, man. It's just, it's, it does such a good job of like an area of denial with torpedoes. Like the guns aren't the best and the concealment isn't the best, but my goodness, this thing is an amazing torpedo boat. If you love just sending wave after wave after wave of torpedoes at battleships and cruisers oh man you're gonna love this ship it's like the one thing that the the uh humphrey has it's more of like a jack of all trade super ship where it has okay good good concealment good guns good torps this thing is has excellent torpedoes and doesn't ha and it has okay guns and okay uh concealment well, the Humphrey is more like more jack of all trades. This is more of a, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much a super YY and the Humphrey's a super gearing. It's just how they both are. This, this is a super YY, but it's just more special. It's more specialized in the torpedoes while the Humphrey is more of just a super gearing with a burst fire. That, that's like the one thing I don't understand. I don't understand why the coming doesn't get like a burst fire. It would be nice if it did. It would definitely help out the poor gun performance. To be able to get more guns out but as you can it does get already gets a reload booster for the torpedo so i think that's probably why they didn't they're just trying to get where people focus more on torpedoes for than anything else but yeah in the end it is what it is because i think for all super ships just the burst fire should just be on all of them it should be just like a base thing because a super ship is supposed to be a super ship not like it's meant to be super not you know mediocre but this thing is definitely super sending out torps. That is a, that's a hundred percent. It does send a crap ton of torpedoes. That is one thing it does really well is it sends a actual crap ton of them. So yeah, that for sure is a definitely its specialty for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So pretty much just like the YY, you kind of want to play the ship as more of like a spotter role. You're spotting the enemy trying to Vary the Nile for their DDs. Uh, as well as you're also trying to... What else do you do? What else do you do? Oh, yeah. You spot area the Nile and spam a crap ton of torps. There you go. I couldn't get the words out for some reason. Uh, I don't I don't know why. But, uh, yeah. You pretty you pretty just spam out torpedoes and have fun with that. So... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely a fun time for sure. Ugh. But for me personally, like I do enjoy being able to spam out torpedoes and just meme on people, but at the same time, I'm not like a super big fan 
of like pure torp boats because you get like really hit or miss matches and i'll try to explain it pretty much one issue that ha people have with like a lot of ships that like if you're doing torpedoes if you're on a flank that you're the side that's pushing and they're kiting you're not going to be able to get a lot of torpedo hits normally but if you're on a flank where the, they're pushing and you're able to kite and torpedo them then yes you're going to have usually do a lot better of a match so your matches are either going to be really good they're going to be a hit or a or a mismatch and since normally you spawn on a flank side so you spawn on one side or the other you can't really just rotate and leave your flank alone so for instance it used to be a major problem a while ago where people would just leave their flanks that they spawned on because they didn't like them and you can't really do that because if you do do that you're going to pretty much if, if you have a ship leaving a flank it's it's already a detriment to the match so for instance you have like a dd leaving a side and going somewhere else now the enemy dd that's on that flank that left is now going to have the advantage because there's no more dd over the spot uh, to spot it or pretty much deny it any access to the cap or anything else so normally you always have to try to keep the, sh your, the ships in the same side or you pretty much just get like a loss like it's almost like a guaranteed loss for that flank especially with dds dds are one of the most influential uh classes in the in the game uh with all the spotting uh area denial for dds and submarines so being able to project that is definitely really important for dd players so a lot of the times dd players either you get the dd players that either just do their job really well and so pretty much you either get the d so most people just notice either the really good dd players or the really bad dd players most people don't most people like when they call things out they don't really normal or they don't really see the normal or the average dd player they just see usually the really good dd player or like the really bad dd player like the ones that die within the first two minutes or the dds that are just wiping out all the other dds or they're just doing insane torpedo hits all the time or just like getting all the caps and such so it's, it's, it's just a big margin like in between like for the dd players but for me personally i definitely i did enjoy playing the coming for these matches like with all the torpedoes are there definitely fun to do that but i'm more of like a gumbo dd player so overall it's like it's not my style so i'll just say that but yeah that's gonna be it i'm um, sorry about the confusion or the replays i do apologize for that but yep if you guys have any questions or concerns leave them in the comments down below well this is overlord boat and i'll talk to y'all later be well